Good afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlothauer here, and welcome back to another Routine Tropical Weather Outlook and Discussion, Episode 8, for Friday, May 23rd, 2025. So, here's a look at the very latest satellite imagery across the main development region of the Atlantic, including for the Caribbean, where Jamaica and the Cayman Islands are, as well as much of the Gulf of Mexico. And what we have today right now is literally not much convection out there at all. Well, that's also because it's early in the morning. We're going to have a lot of showers and thunderstorms down here across Venezuela and Central America, as well as Costa Rica and eventually in Honduras, as well as Nicaragua. Not to mention, though, we do have some passing showers this morning and early afternoon across most of the leeward and windward islands here such as dominica as well as martinique if you are on saint kitts and nevis barbados as well as trinidad and tobago just keep that in mind we have some showers there and then of course we got the saharan dust plume that is on its way and once it gets to these islands you're going to notice it very unhealthy air quality the sun is going to dim the skies are going to turn really muddy and dirty and brown and that's going to lead to that bad air quality. Taking a look now at the latest graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center. And the good news here is there is no tropical cyclone activity expected during the next 48 hours. Okay, that's what we all like to hear, right? Nothing to be concerned about at all out here in the main development region or the Caribbean and even the Gulf of Mexico. So you all... For Memorial Weekend, could actually go out and barbecue and have a lot of fun with your family and friends, which is great. I'm actually going to have some fun with my grandma and for my family this weekend and also for the day of Memorial Day. It's a time to celebrate your, the veterans who died while in service and, and celebrate that. So, um, yeah, so if you're doing anything for Memorial Day, looks pretty good. Looks really nice. And also over the next seven days looks pretty good as well. Um, no, nothing to worry about over the next week, but not so much for the Eastern Pacific. While the National Hurricane Center doesn't have anything highlighted here over the next couple of days, that's to be expected because the area that we're watching isn't going to develop be until beyond that. And so 48 hours looks pretty good. But when we look at the next seven days, this is where we have that area to really uh, to watch really closely. This now has a 60% chance of tropical development over the next seven days. So that has a medium to high chance of development, okay? And so if you're living along the coast here of Mexico, such as Puerto Vallarta, Mazalan, Mexico, as well as uh, Cabo San Lucas, Still keep an eye on this, even so the GFS model, spoiler alert, has this literally going out this direction. Does not mean it's going to do that. We have had some wild inconsistencies where the GFS had two systems doing Fujiwara effect going really close to the coast. Some of the models still bring it like that. And now the recent GFS, you'll see, brings it well away from the coast here of Mexico. So we're not, I'm not calling this one off yet. I am not. And we are going to need to watch this. So with that being said, here's a look at the latest 06Z GFS model run. This stands for Global Forecasting System or formerly known as the American Model. So when we look at this on the precipitation rate forecast, you can see that showers and thunderstorms are expected to blossom up today across portions of the Caribbean, such as portions here of Cuba, as well as even a storm over there in Jamaica, as well as if you are in, in the Dominican Republic, as well as Hispaniola, showers and thunderstorms are expected today. If you're in uh, Jamaica, not Jamaica, uh, Puerto Rico there, there we go, um, U.S. and British Virgin Islands, if you're on Guadeloupe, Dominica, St. Lucia, um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as well as Barbados, St. Kitts and Nevis. Just keep that in mind. We are expecting to see these showers and thunderstorms blow right through, and each of those will contain enough heavy rainfall to lead to some 
very minor flooding issues. You know the drill. It's your windward and leeward showers that move through the Caribbean. Okay, so nothing unusual with that at all. So putting this now into motion, we will still see those showers and thunderstorms roll on through as we go into Sunday afternoon. So the next 66 hours, this is what we're anticipating to see. More enhancement due to that weak tropical wave as it moves on through. And then over the next uh, four days, this is what we have. So still showers, thunderstorms over Puerto Rico, U.S. British Virgin Islands, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Antigua. If you're on Guadeloupe, um, if you are on Dominica, as well as St. Catanivis, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago down here, as well as Aruba down here, uh, Venezuela. Just keep that in mind. Honduras, as well as... Um, portions there of the Yucatan, you're going to get some showers. This is going to continue all the way through pretty much the next several days with kind of on again, off again showers and a storm or two bringing some rainfall with it. But all eyes are on deck on the eastern Pacific with the first potential named storm that is looking more and more likely as we go into the middle to the end of this week. Okay, I call it Memorial Week, not weekend, because Memorial Day is on Monday, and the uh, the days following that, usually you call it Memorial Week. So that's what we're going to deem it as, and you can see for Memorial Week, we're going to have to keep an eye on this storm right here, this tropical system on the 29th of May. And going forward, that strengthens up to a 954 millibar Hurricane, yeah, this would be a hurricane, a powerful one, as it moves along the uh, part of, uh, part, uh, Puerto Vallarta, if I can say it right here in Spanish, or a little Spanish name, as well as um, if you are in, say, Mazalan, Mexico, just keep that in mind right along here. Um, you are going to be seeing some showers and some breezy winds as that passes. Now, this GFS model doesn't have it moving uh, towards you guys, but if we look at a previous run, it was further offshore, so we're not done seeing trends like this. And then if we look at a previous run and then a run before that, this was one wild run yesterday. Look how close that got to the coast. So we are not done seeing wiggles with the models here wiggling to the um, northeast a little bit or wiggling to the southwest. And right now, this is trended closer to the coast with enhancement of rainfall with that hurricane. That moves off and kind of disintegrates out there in the out there in the Pacific. And then we will have to watch on what goes on down here once we go well past January or June 1st and the 2nd. In fact, if we go all the way out in time, we don't have anything to worry about on the GFS yet. Yet, okay, notice how I really emphasize that. This is only June the 7th and the 8th, depending on the time zone that you're in. So this is about the beginning of that favorable environment that I'm going to show you here on the MJO forecast. Now, really quickly, I wanted to show you all the 850 millibar cyclonic relative vorticity, similar to the Tropical Tidbits website, where these orange colors indicate vorticity the darker the orange and red indicates more stronger vorticity this is actually a better representation no offense to tropical tidbits because you can actually see the outline here of where that vorticity actually is and then it gets all the way to the red which indicates very strong vorticity similar though you got your um your height contours right here which is helpful, and you can actually see the wind barbs a little bit better, which tell us that the wind here is pretty strong. These trades are kicking butt through the Caribbean, and then they curve around like this. So you can see where our trade winds are blowing. You can see a, a belt of trade winds right here, and then down to the south where we get very light, loose southwesterly flow. This is where we have vorticity, and this is where our area of uh, development is going to be within that intertropical convergence zone, that monsoon trough, we call it. So putting this into motion, you can see there is our system right there. See that? See how the winds do that? They blow out of the southwest here, and then they curl around, and then they kind of do that. 
That is why we can get systems like this forming in the Eastern Pacific because all this vorticity will bundle up and spin up, and which is why I like using this product uh, from from cyclonicwx.com's website. Really is helpful and it really visualize what we're looking for out there. And so this is what we look for on this type of um, product is the tight spin that we have, how much vorticity spin in the atmosphere there is at 5,000 feet. And right now, um, that's what we have. Now looking further out in time over the uh, Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, nothing to be worried about at all. And that's normal. We expect that here on the GFS. We don't expect any development to really start trending on the GFS once we get closer. So I bet you once we're 10 days out from about June the 10th or the 11th, roughly speaking, but on my thumbnail, it's June 8th all the way through June, wait, June 7th all the way through June the 18th. If I my memory serves correctly. Um, and so once we get closer to that time period, I expect we're going to have a good size monsoon trough out here that we're going to need to monitor closely. Okay, with that being said, I wanted to show you all something really cool, but also important on my YouTube videos here on the tropics. So this is a look at the European Ensemble Mean 200 Millibar Velocity Potential Anomaly. This is a hov molar diagram at showing what parts of the atmosphere across the tropics are seeing favorable conditions for tropical development or unfavorable conditions for tropical development. Okay, and so um, let's kind of uh, read the map and how to read this before we actually get into the details. So May 23rd is here, 25th, 27th, and you're going to see, it's hard to see, but these dotted lines going across. Of course, I can't make a dotted line. So this is your time series scales. Oops, right there. And it goes across like this and like this and like this, so on and so forth. All right, and you end up with June 7th way down here. So time increases as you go down, okay, down in time, okay? And then lines going across like this, you guys should know this by now, is longitude. So 60 degrees east in longitude is over the Indian Ocean. 180 degrees is roughly where the international date line is. Um, and then six or 120 degrees west in longitude is where the Eastern Pacific is. And then where a lot of us live is west of 60 degrees west in longitude. And that is the Atlantic side. That's um, basically uh, where the Caribbean is. That's the far southwestern Atlantic where it intersects and even the Gulf of Mexico. And so if you look at the thumbnail down here, that that will help ease the confusion on what part we're looking at. OK, and so you can see right now all of these orange and yellow colors indicate sinking motion in the atmosphere. This is unfavorable. So if you literally think about the atmosphere across the tropics, there's portions of the atmosphere on, in parts of the world where the air actually rises gives way to convection and tropical development. So right now, uh, if you're in the Western Pacific, we're more likely to have more um, cyclone or typhoon activity over the next couple of weeks. And that's because we have all this upward motion. Over Africa, there's a lack of convection because there's a lot of sinking. Hence is why we see dust coming off of Africa, that Saharan air layer that's going to be pretty prevalent as it moves into the Caribbean and the Leeward Windward Islands over the next three to five days. And that's because all this sinking motion that is in place all the way through the rest of May. But as we transition out of May into early June, though, we are seeing less sinking motion and more neutral colors that develop out here for early June. But once we go into like June the 5th, June the 7th, this is where we have a lot of upward motion that begins over the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and even po for portions of the far southwestern Atlantic. And it's this area right here, okay, it's this area 
that we're concerned about for the potential of a Central American gyre that gives way to at least one named storm during this period, especially from about June the 7th and beyond. So there's a time range that I have here between June the 7th all the way through the 16th and the 17th-ish is what we're going to be watching for in the Central America or in the Caribbean and portions of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, when we look at this even further out in time, same exact map, but only now we're looking out to July the 6th. So the entire month of June, you can see um, unfavorable here, possibly unfavorable here. Um, you know, that would be pretty much the first through about the 6th and the 7th. But look at all hands are on deck after that. Look at all this rising motion in the deep tropics of the Atlantic going all the way through from about the 7th of June, the 11th of June, the 16th, the 21st, the 26th. Now, of course, this is one model run of the control run of the Euro, and this changes between each run. So it may not look like this at all, but based on the latest forecast, we are looking at a lot of upward motion, more likely some convective coupled Kelvin waves moving over the area, helping to give birth to maybe at least one or two named storms out there over the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico during this period. Well, if you found this routine tropical weather outlook and discussion episode 8th, for Friday, May 23rd, 2025, very helpful, detailed, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It really helps out a lot. I am very, very excited, folks. You don't know how excited I am to track these tropical systems live in real time when I go live if a hurricane or tropical storm makes landfall within 24 hours of a given area and also, I am going to be doing live streaming discussions if a hurricane or tropical storm makes landfall within two to four days, which is exciting. So if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, please do so. It really does help out a lot. And lastly, a big announcement that I wanted to share in this video as well is I have released merchandise on my YouTube channel. So if you all want to go check that out, just go to my YouTube channel here and then go over. So, yeah, go to, over to my channel. Good and Thursday then, morning. Not that, of course. Uh, and then go over to where it says store. That's where you could find my latest merchandise. Now, this is the initial release of it. I am working on more over the next couple of weeks while the tropics remain quiet at the moment. And so if you want to purchase something from a sweatshirt to a mug, please do so. It really helps out a lot. And even you can get a die cut sticker as well of a tornado. I'm going to make a hurricane one here. If you want to check this out, just go to store um, and then just click on the item which you wish to purchase and then just enter your credit card details and voila, you did it. Um, so yeah, there's more merchandise coming out here over the next couple of months and I'm excited to launch this out here onto my YouTube channel. Also, one other quick thing that I wanted to mention about the merchandise is if you want to get this cheaper for 10% off of your order, please use the code Early bird at checkout for 10% off on any product that you see here. This sale goes over the next couple of months, so don't wait. Get it now while it's 10% off at this time. The code early bird for 10% off is also in the description where you can check it out. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.